In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about disorders of digestion and absorption of carbohydrates. Here I will talk about two disorders of digestion and one disorder of absorption. The two disorders of digestion are the first one is lactose intolerance, lactose intolerance and second one is sucrase isomaltase deficiency, sucrase isomaltase deficiency and one disorder of absorption of carbohydrate is glucose galactose malabsorption, glucose galactose malabsorption which is also called as a GGM as a short form. So, let us first talk about lactose intolerance. Lactose intolerance is the most common disorder of digestion of carbohydrate. Now, it is estimated that the two-third of the world's adult population is affected by this lactose intolerance, right. Now, lactose uh, intolerance, it occurs because of the deficiency of lactase, deficiency of lactase. This lactase is the enzyme which digests lactose, right. Now, the deficiency of lactase, it can be one of two types. The first one is the inherited deficiency, inherited deficiency that means there is a defective gene is passed from the parents to the children, okay. And the second variety is the acquired variety. In case of acquired deficiency, the normal gene is passed from the parents to the children, but some other disease had altered the structure of lactase and so lactose is not able to get digested. Let us look at both of them one by one. The first one is inherited deficiency of lactase. Now, inherited deficiency, there can be a two varieties. The first one is complete absence of enzyme, complete absence of lactose and this type of variety, it mainly affects children. It is mostly seen in, seen in the children. The second variety is the low activity of the lactase enzyme and this variety is mostly seen in adults. Earlier, what I told you is that that world's two-third of the adult population is affected by the lactase deficiency, right. So, this type of variety is seen in mostly in the adult. In case of acquired variety, this acquired variety occurs due to intestinal diseases, due to intestinal diseases. See what happens, this lactase is not freely secreted into the intestinal lumen, rather it is bound with the cell membrane of the cells which are lining the intestine, right. So, what happens whenever there is any intestinal disease, there is high chance that the cell membrane which is facing on the luminal side, it, it will be affected and so the enzyme which is bound with this side of cell membrane, it also gets affected. That is why in most of the intestinal diseases, lactase deficiency will be seen. Mostly, it is seen in gastroenteritis and celiac sprue. So, the first one is gastroenteritis and celiac sprue. These are the two more common intestinal disease which leads to deficiency of lactase. Now, let us discuss about the clinical features. Now, to understand the clinical features of lactose intolerance, suppose this is the portion of intestine, right. Now, what is the normal function of lactase? The normal function of lactase is to break down this lactose which is disaccharide to its constituent monosaccharide that is glucose and galactose. But in case of lactose intolerance, this enzyme either completely or partially absent. So, this reaction is the blocked, right. So, what will happen? Lactose will start accumulating in the intestine. This lactose is the osmotically active. It is osmotically active. 
so it pulls water into this intestinal lumen and because of that diarrhea occurs okay so this is the one main clinical feature of the lactose intolerance second what happens this accumulated lactose it gets fermented by intestinal bacteria fermented by intestinal bacteria so as a product of fermentation there are various gases are produced these gases are hydrogen gas methane gas carbon dioxide etc and as a end product this lactose is converted to lactic acid so because of these gases patient feels that his abdomen is bloated okay and there will be lots of flatulence flatulence so these are the two main clinical feature of the lactose intolerance these are diarrhea and flatulence and by this we understand the concept behind it that why these two clinical features are main in lactose intolerance now how to diagnose this lactose intolerance so diagnosis now to diagnose generally clinician what clinician does is they feed the patient with the lactose so feed with the lactose when clinician suspect that this person might have lactose intolerance so what they do they give the lactose sugar to such patient they feed them with the lactose and let 2 hours to pass after passing of 2 hour clinician collects 3 samples one is the breath that is expired air second one is the blood and third is the stool so in the breath as we have seen that hydrogen gas is produced and many times this hydrogen gas it is it comes into the expired air so what clinician does is that they collect the expired air of the patient in the balloon and in this balloon they try to estimate the partial pressure of hydrogen so here hydrogen partial pressure will be increased and if it is increased it is suggestive of lactose intolerance in the blood sample what they detect is they detect glucose concentration glucose concentration so normally what happens suppose if lactase enzyme is normal right then what happens lactose is converted to glucose and galactose and this glucose is absorbed so what will happen ideally after feeding with the lactose blood glucose concentration should be increased but in case of lactase deficiency what will happen there is no possibility of this conversion to glucose right so glucose cannot absorb and so there will be no increase in the blood glucose concentration so here if we measure the blood glucose concentration if there is no increase in blood glucose concentration then it is suggestive of lactose intolerance and this particular taste we call it as a lactose tolerance taste lactose tolerance taste the third sample is with the stool now in the stool what happens whenever there is a lactase enzyme deficit this lactose is getting converted to the lactic acid and because of the lactic acid there is a low ph in the stool so if the stool has a low ph it is suggestive of the lactose intolerance so by these three tests we can diagnose lactose intolerance how to manage such patient or what is the treatment modality in case of lactose intolerance so the first and foremost treatment mo modality is the avoid lactose containing diet avoid lactose containing diet so what are, what are the lactose containing diet so lactose is the principal sugar in the milk so avoid milk and its all product now instead of milk you can use yogurt or curd use of yogurt or curd now what happens in yogurt or curd there is a presence of lactobacilli lactobacilli these lactobacilli they convert lactose in the milk into the lactic acid so this lactic acid it can be easily digestible so we can use instead of this milk based dairy product we can use yogurt or curd based product right and the third treatment modality which is recently available is use of live lactobacilli use of live 
lactobacilli. These live lactobacilli commercial preparations are now available in the form of tablets. Okay, so we can use this live lactobacilli also. So with this completes the first disorder that is lactose intolerance. The second disorder of the digestion of carbohydrate is the sucrase isomaltase deficiency. So the second disorder is sucrase isomaltase deficiency. Now the sucrase isomaltase deficiency, their clinical features are similar to lactose intolerance. So what happens here the sucrase and isomaltase both are a part of same protein. So this is the single protein molecule, it is one part, this part has a sucrase activity and this part has a isomaltase activity. isomaltase activity. So, this protein is basically a dual function. So, whenever sucrase deficiency is there, it is high chance that associated isomaltase deficiency will be there. But whatever the case, this sucrase and isomaltase, in the absence of this enzyme, what happens? Sucrose and isomaltose, this two disaccharide will fail to digest. And so, what will happen? Both will present in the intestinal lumen in the high concentration. So, they create osmotic pressure and so diarrhea will occur just like lactose intolerance and they are also getting fermented by the intestinal bacteria and so there is a flatulence, right. So, here again it is uh, very similar to the lactose intolerance, so I am not repeating that. And the management is also similar to the lactose intolerance. In the lactose intolerance, we were avoiding lactose based diet, whereas in case of sucrase isomaltase deficiency, we need to avoid sucrose isomaltose based diet, right. Now, let us discuss about the disorder of absorption of carbohydrate that is galactose, glucose galactose malabsorption or GGM. So, glucose galactose malabsorption or GGM. Now, this occurs, this disorder occurs because of the deficiency of SGLT1. There is a deficiency of SGLT1. Now, SGLT is the sodium glucose transporter 1. In my previous video, I told you that SGLT1 is the transporter protein for the absorption of glucose and galactose. This acts by the secondary active transport mechanism. Now, fortunately, the deficiency of this SGLT1, it is very rare. Okay? It is uh, in the world so far only few hundreds of cases are reported. So, it is actually a very, very rare. This SGLT1 gene, it is located on the chromosome number 15. Now, you can imagine what will happen if SGLT1 is deficient. Your glucose and galactose cannot be absorbed. Okay? So, what will happen? Suppose this is the intestinal tube. Your glucose and galactose, they are not able to get absorbed. Why? Because there is a deficiency of SGLT1. So, glucose and galactose will accumulate inside this intestinal lumen and it is osmotically active. So, water molecule is accumulated inside this intestinal lumen. So, there will be very severe diarrhea, very severe diarrhea. Why? Because more than 80 percent of our daily life food is first converted to glucose and galactose and if so much of glucose galactose accumulates in the intestinal lumen, it will lead to very severe diarrhea, it, which may lead to dehydration in very short time. And th because of this dehydration, death is common, right? So, this is very, very severe disorder, but luckily it is very rare, okay? So, how to manage such patient or how to treat such patient? So, there must be complete removal of glucose and galactose, right? Complete removal of glucose and galactose from the diet. 
otherwise there will be very severe diarrhea okay so if we remove glucose and galactose then what to give in the diet we can give fructose based diet fructose based diet right so that's all about the disorders of digestion and absorption of carbohydrates if you have any query or confusion please write it down in the comment section below thank you